Hello, and thank you for joining us for a webinar today about our hometowns. Um, so today is our very first Monday meetup. Um, this is a part of our new Lakehead International Live series where we'll be going uh, live daily at 10 a.m. on several different platforms. You'll have your opportunity to meet prospective um, professors, other applicants, current students, faculty members, staff, um, and we'll be chatting about plenty of different topics as well as um, maybe even answering your questions throughout the webinar. So today I am going to be chatting about our hometowns, Thunder Bay, Aurelia, uh, Ontario, Canada, and I am joined by Katie Frazier and Patrick Carr. So I'll give you a bit of background about myself and then I'll pass it off to each of them to uh, chat a little bit. So I am the International New and Social Media Officer here at Lakehead University. I help oversee our online presence as well as our digital recruitment efforts overseas. Um, and that entails running our social media channels as well as hosting uh, similar live events, vi virtual events like this. So maybe I'll pass it off to Patrick first to chat about himself um, and then Katie after that. Yeah, good morning, everybody. My name is Patrick Carr. I am one of the many international recruitment officers at Lakehead University. Specifically, I handle the Middle East, Africa, and the Caribbean as regions that I visit regularly. Um, I'm based here in Thunder Bay, and I grew up here in Thunder Bay, so I'm happy to chat about my hometown and uh, talk to you about Lakehead this morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm Katie Fraser, and I'm the International Engagement Specialist at Lakehead University's Aurelia campus. Um, so my role is supporting our international students and our English language learners. Um, so you might have already received an email from me with a welcome package, giving you some info um, to get you started with your journey. Um, I am born and raised in Aurelia, so I know lots about our community, um, and I also graduated from the Aurelia campus um, quite some time ago. Uh, so I'm looking forward to working with everybody. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Patrick and Katie, for chatting um, and joining me to help run this webinar. So today, uh, it's a bit different than what we're typically used to with these sort of uh, live virtual events. Each of us are working remotely from our homes, staying safe. Um, so I do wanna pre-apologize if you hear any odd noises that don't seem office environment like. I have my two dogs here and I know that both Katie and Patrick have pets of their own. Uh, so if you hear some barking, I do apologize, but otherwise we'll get right into it. We'll start chatting about uh, Lakehead University in general, and then we'll move right into the hometowns as, as promised as it is the topic of the day. So Lakehead University is a place where students can gather and learn. So there's a, a portion of an academic experience, but also more importantly, there's the student experience and the student experience encompasses living in Thunder Bay or living in Aurelia. So imagine a university where your professors know your name, where peers and student service staffs you meet on day one will be the familiar faces you recognize on day two and soon become lifelong friends and your mentors. Imagine a university where instead of walking into a big lecture hall full of strangers, you'll walk into an academic community where your input matters, where your success counts. So this photo actually on the screen before I move, um, this is in Thunder Bay. Um, this is on the shores of Lake Superior always a hot spot for students that want to go get out in nature, go for a quick hike. Um, here's another example. This is um, also in Thunder Bay where students went on a hike uh, in Mink Mountain and they were enjoying their time quite clearly, um, celebrating with a nice jump. And then here's actually right on campus in Thunder Bay. So this is our Lake Tamblin. It is the heart of campus as we like to call it. Um, of course, in the summer, we actually have plenty of our classes that are involved and maybe analyzing. In this case, I know that they're looking into the microorganisms that live in the water um, and also testing the soils and whatnot and testing the water itself. Um, but another really nice thing about this is that in the winter, uh, this entire lake and river freezes over and students are actually able to skate on there in their free time. So when they're not focused on their studies and they want to take a little breather they can get out there put some skates on and uh, enjoy the ice and of course we have our our labs so like it does have 
advance uh, state-of-the-art laboratory equipment across campus, of course, coupled with our perfect natural environments that I was just talking about. And then here's a great photo to really showcase our athletics um, and the community that we're building here at Lakehead. So what I will talk about uh, now is we're gonna move on to Thunder Bay. Um, so the city of Thunder Bay is, has a population of about 110,000 people and it used to actually be two cities. So it used to be Port Arthur and Fort William um, and then it came together as one bigger city. Uh, we'll get into that a bit more. Um, so myself, I'm born and raised in Thunder Bay. I have um, been here for over 20 years now. Um, I have plenty of my friends here. I met plenty of my friends at Lakehead University though. Um, so I did the four year honors Bachelor of Commerce program and I majored in marketing and minored in human resources and industrial relations. And I met most of my current friends actually uh, at Lakehead through my studies. Um, so I didn't live on campus, um, but of course I got to enjoy the city of Thunder Bay and get out there and experience it and whatnot. So like I was saying, a little bit of history about Thunder Bay. Um, so it used to be uh, two cities. One was Port Arthur and the other was Fort William. Um, and then they amalgamated in 1970. So actually, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, this, this year is actually our 50th year of being one, one city together. Um, Patrick, did you want to add anything about maybe the history of Thunder Bay here or jump in? Yeah, so I think you you covered a lot of it. Um, a big part of big part of Thunder Bay's history is, uh, you know, it's it's location geographically on Lake Superior, um, and that being a shipping point for the entire country. So uh, every every spring, as the ice breaks up over the lake, you'll see large shipping vessels that transport uh, products like grain and canola from Western Canada uh, east um, all the way. Uh, through the Great Lakes and eventually to the Atlantic Ocean, all the way potentially to the world. Um, so Thunder Bay has always acted as what's called a transshipment point uh, from its origins uh, as two cities all the way to present day, which is pretty cool. Awesome, yeah, and being that uh, hub for that shipping and um, having all those ships come in Thunder Bay and then go out from Canada. So when they get to Thunder Bay, they offload our, all of their cargo and then on to trains that go goes and then it goes east, west, north, south, everywhere in between. Um, and so that also really adds to the aspect of some of our learning environments and having our students being involved in different processes. Um, for example, if you're doing a cooperative education experience, you could be paired um, and working with a company that really captures that transportation hub. So we do already have a few questions. Um, there is a student that would like to know a little bit about part-time jobs. So we wanna make sure that these um, daily live events are a place for students to come and join us and ask questions throughout the webinar. Um, but we do wanna make sure that we answer questions as they pop up because you might not necessarily join to hear the entire webinar, but you do wanna get your question in. Um, and that's why we've created these live daily events at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so maybe Patrick, could I pass it off, off to you and, and then Katie, you could uh, join in to chat about part-time jobs. Yeah, for sure. So um, nearly every international student is allowed to work on campus. Um, it's a part of your on or off campus, and that's a part of your study permit. Um, there are some students that uh, cannot work, but for the most part, students doing a degree program can get a, uh, a job. You're allowed to work 20 hours a week in Canada, and um, we have a whole team of people in Thunder Bay and in Aurelia who will help students prepare their resume, start the application process, learn how to find jobs. Um, and the great thing about Ontario is that the minimum wage is quite high, so you can make a good amount of money working a part-time job 20 hours a week during your studies uh, and during your, uh, during your vacation, the summer holidays, you can actually work full-time, which is 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So I'll jump in. Um, so all the same stuff Patrick had mentioned, a lot of our international students are keen to find part-time work um, pretty soon after they arrive on campus. 
Um, we also have support in Aurelia to help students prepare their cover letters and resumes and um, get ready for any interviews that you might be having for those part-time positions. Um, and with the Aurelia campus, it's been very common for students to work um, in the uh, nearby restaurants and food service industry, um, hotels, grocery stores, uh, things like that. And oftentimes employers are very receptive uh, to receiving uh, student applications because students need a little bit of flexibility and they're open to evening and weekend work. Um, so we always suggest that you be really upfront with any employers that you're approaching, let them know what your class schedule looks like, um, just be very transparent with them and they're usually very happy to work with you and, and work around your class schedule um, because uh, when it comes down to it, your, your education and your academics come first. Um, and if you find the right employer, they're gonna make that work the best for you. Mm -hmm. And also to add on to what Katie was saying, for um, lots of our students that are working in the food and service industry, it really adds that um, experience to being able to communicate and interact with the community on a regular basis. So it helps you um, improve your English skills and also just gain that extra uh, cultural knowledge about uh, living and being a Canadian. So we do have some more questions. Um, one question was now that uh, basically every country is facing the current situation of COVID-19, will this delay the classes in September of fall 2020? Um, so to answer that question right now, um, we are taking this and Lakehead's upper management and senior management team is meeting on a weekly basis to review uh, the current state of the, this major health, pub, the public health concern. Um, there have been no decisions made for fall 2020. Um, and that, that's in the positive that there's no decisions made that we uh, aren't having classes in fall 2020. That is our hopes, of course, that we'll have all of our students joining us in fall 2020 on campus and doing our regular classes. Um, but we are monitoring the situation. I do want to let you know that um, our senior management team is acting really fast on this and evaluating the situation as it evolves. Um, so you as an applicant will be the first to know um, about that mode of lecturing and teaching and joining Lakehead in fall 2020. So uh, another question, how much percentage of students from international on the Thunder Bay campus? So I know that right now, um, roughly 13% of our student population is international, but that does count for both campuses. Um, and to speak to that, that's a little over, um, that's roughly 1,300 students right now. I, I believe we actually might be over 1,300, uh, just depending on who you count, because we also have short-term English language students that are worked into those numbers. Um, and I know that Katie is very involved in those uh, English language programs that are really a campus. So we have quite a few questions coming in. Um, maybe I'll, I'll go back to some of the slides here quickly and then um, we'll come back to some of the questions too. Alrighty, so this is a photo of Thunder Bay's waterfront. Um, you'll see there that we have a really beautiful marina. There's trails all along the entire waterfront here um, so students can get out and exercise and enjoy the beautiful views. Um, right there in the heart of downtown too we have a really great entertainment district now um, and plenty of restaurants and pubs to join and visit um, that's how i typically enjoy spending my weekends i like to go out on a friday night um, eat at one of the really great restaurants and then maybe go catch a live concert downtown and get to enjoy my time with my friends down here i know that lots of our international students um, being that i work on a daily basis with current students. Um, I'm always seeing them downtown. It's great to catch up with them when I see them down there. Um, <clears throat> Patrick, did you want to chat about the waterfront at all? Uh, well, I think you covered it. It's a, it's a great place to, to hang out. There's a great park now down, down there. There's a, an ice skating rink in the wintertime. And in the summertime in the park, there's a weekly free concerts that happen. So it's a great place to be year round. Mm -hmm. I, I forget what the series is called, but like Patrick was saying, there are free concerts. So if on, on the right of your screen, you see um, more of the green area and then there's a yellow and white tent looking thing. 
um, that is where we have our concerts. So we bring in bands and actually we're pretty fortunate that um, the city of Thunder Bay pays for all the bands. So it's 100% free. You get to go out down there, um, enjoy a beautiful night, and then also get some really good snacks from local vendors. And like Patrick had mentioned in the winter, uh, we turn some of the area into a skating rink. Um, <clears throat> and people love, love that. They really enjoy that. So downtown Port Arthur, um, we have plenty of restaurants um, and there's tastes of around the world. So we have anywhere from uh, a place, one of my favorites is Thai Kitchen, um, where I can get a great pad Thai. Um, and then we also have Canadian cuisine. We have um, East Indian cuisine. We also have, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Japanese, where we do sushi downtown too. Um, in this case, this is, uh, a local record shop. So there's plenty of lo local businesses that you get to explore and visit downtown, uh, support locally, as well as um, just get, get to meet the people of our community and interact with them on a regular basis is a great opportunity. So I will jump back now to the Q&A. So this question, I, I do like this one. Um, I heard it's pretty cold in some seasons, how far it goes. Uh, I am from India, um, so I can speak to that. I'm sure maybe Patrick and Katie could pop in here too. Um, uh, to be completely honest, we're very lucky in having four distinct seasons. So we have a true fall, winter, spring, and summer. Um, in winter, that's typically when our students would say that it is quite cold here. Um, but I've actually, I've talked to plenty of students from India um, and compared to some of the um, very high temperatures there, they would prefer, because you can dress for the weather. So we are always running workshops throughout the year and especially leading up to winter to make sure that our students are prepared and they're uh, buying the proper gear. So a winter jacket, hat, gloves, a scarf, and just wearing the proper um, clothing to make sure that they're dressing appropriately for the weather. Because um, you can always put more layers on, you can always dress for um, having a bit of a chill in the air. Um, but of course, when it gets too hot, there's just, to an extent, you still have to wear clothes and you still have to um, combat that heat. So I, I've actually heard from quite a few students that they prefer uh, our winters being a little more chilly compared to some of the extremely hot summers and days that they're experiencing in India. <clears throat> so another student, I got admitted to Lakehead for fall, but I don't know how to apply for scholarships. If you would please help me um, in where and how to apply for those. So if you are um, applying to an undergraduate program, you will automatically be considered for a entrance scholarship as soon as you apply. So our admissions team, as well as our financial aid team, will review all of your final grades after we've converted them to the Canadian equivalency. And then we will calculate whether you are, are eligible for that scholarship. If you are, you don't need to apply for it. We automatically apply that towards your student account um, and you will receive notice uh, in the form of a letter letting you know that you've received that scholarship. So I'm just reading some of the questions here. Well, there's one I read, Jordan, that mm -hmm. um, talked about how to get to Thunder Bay from Toronto. Um, there are a variety of ways to get to either of our campuses, but uh, to get to Thunder Bay specifically, um, most of our international students from Toronto will fly. Uh, the Thunder Bay Airport has three airlines that fly into it uh, from Toronto. Um, two kind of international airlines being Air Canada, which has uh, dozens, hundreds of partners around the world, and the other being WestJet, which also has a number of partners around the world. And so most students will land in Toronto, um, do their customs and immigration to Canada there, and then fly to Thunder Bay, at which point when you're arriving to Lakehead, we'll uh, meet you at the airport and help you get to campus and get you all settled in residence or your off-campus accommodations. Um, you can drive, however, uh, it's quite a long drive and, and usually after an international flight, most students would prefer the quick uh, hour and 10 minute flight. Katie, do you wanna chat about how to get to Aurelia? 
Yeah, thanks. Um, so Aurelia, um, we are about 90 minutes from Pearson Airport in Toronto. Um, so your flights stop when you get to Toronto, you don't need to fly anywhere else. Um, one of the services that we provide to all incoming international students is a free transportation service right from Toronto Pearson Airport to either your residents at the Aurelia campus, or if you're living off campus, they'll take you right to your home off campus campus. Um, so this is again provided free um, by the International Department um, and in your welcome package that you will have received either from myself or um, Sarah Melvin in Thunder Bay, you'll see instructions there for you to sign up for this service. Um, it's usually offered about three days before and um, I guess a few days after um, orientation just to um, take that stress off your plate. So uh, the earlier you register for it, the sooner we can get you all your instructions. Um, but when you register, you do need to provide your um, flight details so that we know exactly when you're being picked up at the airport. Awesome. And just just quickly before we move away from airports, um, there was a quick question that just came in uh, about how do we facilitate the airport pickup. Once you confirm your offer and as you get closer to your admission date, our international student services team will reach out to you and ask you for your flight information. Um, and so you just send us your flight information and then we track the flights and we ensure that there's someone to greet you at the airport, whether it's Thunder Bay or Aurelia, to get you all squared away and, and, and brought to campus. So keep an eye on your Lakehead email um, as we get closer to the start of the school year, we'll, we'll start collecting that information from you. Awesome. Um, so another question from a student, I want to take a master's admission in computer science with thesis. What is the last date to apply for September 2020? Um, so the initial application deadline has already passed, um, but I do have good news. We are still accepting applications to that program. Um, the only thing is that now that the deadline has passed, uh, it does give us the power to close that application at any point. So once our admissions team does deem that the uh, applications will fill all the current seats in the program. So once we've filled all of those seats, we will close the application. Um, provided that you submit it before us closing the application though, you will automatically be assessed for one of those seats. Uh, so there's no concerns in that. Um, so I do encourage you to apply as soon as possible if you are interested in uh, joining us for fall 2020. And then there are a couple of questions um, about scholarships and about the scholarship process. So I'm just gonna, I'll reiterate what Jordan said earlier. Um, undergraduate students at Lakehead University are automatically assessed for scholarships once we get your final grades. So there's no additional application for undergraduate scholarships. Once you submit all your documents and get your final grades, if you're eligible for a scholarship, you will be issued a scholarship. And if you have any questions about that process, I'd encourage you to email out to your, uh, your regional advisor like myself if you're in Africa or the Middle East, um, or to your, the admissions team. Um, for graduate studies and additional undergraduate scholarships, there is a list of uh, student awards and on the Student Awards and Financial Aid webpage about uh, some additional awards you can apply for and for graduate studies about graduate funding. I would encourage you to go on our website, um, lakehead.ca, and uh, click the international tab. And there's a lot of good information, including information on scholarships, awards, and, and funding that you can, you can review, because it is a little bit case-by-case -case basis uh, when it comes to those additional awards. Awesome. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so another question we have is um, that a student was concerned whether the admissions process was delayed. Uh, or is still happening due to the coronavirus um, or COVID-19 as it's formally known. So I do wanna let you know that our admissions team have really committed to ensuring that we are still processing full applications. We're still doing all of the necessary admission processes. Um, I do wanna let you know that you can expect, even though that we are continuing to do them, um, there may be a little, a little bit of a delay, um, just slightly longer than we had anticipated for originally because it is a new process that our teams have taken on in working remotely and working from home um, but they are working together to ensure that we are staying on top of applications and we're processing them um, so please follow and monitor your 
like at email as well as your MyInfo account because as soon as we do have an admission decision, we will publish it there first. <clears throat> so a uh, student asks, what would the living cost be compared to working part-time? Does the money earned offset the cost? Um, so of course that, that depends on how often you work. As a full-time international student during your academic studies, you can work up to 20 hours a week. Um, so let's imagine you're working 20 hours a week. You, in one month, you've then worked 120 hours. We're very lucky to live in Ontario where the minimum wage is actually $14 Canadian an hour. Um, and that's at the bottom of the minimum that we have to pay you. Um, there are specialty uh, labor and hourly wages for, um, for example, bartenders or people that work in the food service industry as a server or a waitress. Um, and that's because then those people typically make tips on top of their hourly wage. Um, but it, it will significantly offset your housing cost. Um, of course, you need to pick the housing option that's proper and best suited for you, um, maybe based on a financial aspect. So I'm just going to jump in with a couple of quick questions. Uh, someone asked where the Thunder Bay campus is located in relation to downtown. Um, the city of Thunder Bay geographically isn't a, a massive city. The campus is not directly downtown. Um, all of our students get a bus pass and the bus ride uh, from the campus to downtown is about 15 minutes depending on the bus you take. Um, it's about a half an hour walk uh, if you walk at a, a a normal pace, I think. Um, the ca campus is centrally located in the city and it, um, there's also a major, we're a bus hub. So from our campus, you can really get anywhere in the city um, on a variety of buses that stop on campus. So it's, it's pretty conveniently located that way. Um, and then the other question was about cost of residence on campus. And I saw earlier about uh, is residence available for master's students. In Thunder Bay, there are a variety of residence options, so it's hard to give an accurate cost. We have dorm rooms, townhouses, and apartments, and then there's also a variety of meal plan options. I would encourage you to go to the residence website, and again, you can find that information at lakeheadu.ca um, and look at all of the different options. And I think coming up at some point, Jordan and I will probably sit down with residents and do a, a residence and housing webinar. So stay tuned for that uh, for sure. later this month. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, um, another Monday meetup similar to this one at 10 a.m. Uh, we will be joined by our residence life coordinators. I'm hoping to get both Thunder Bay and Aurelia on the same call uh, to do something similar like this. Just chat about the details, chat about uh, the living environments, all that sort of stuff, um, and just hang out and answer your questions. So I do see quite a few questions still. Um, I had marked a few that I would answer, so I'll do that right now, and then I'll flip back to the presentation for a few more slides, um, and we'll kind of do this back and forth just to make sure that we're answering your questions in a timely manner, but also uh, covering the material that some students really want us to. Uh, so one student, how about co-op co -op opportunities for computer science in Thunder Bay? Um, so if you are a student looking to study computer science and you have uh, you have decided that you want to do the co-op. Um, you work with our Student Success Center and more importantly, our dedicated co-op advisor to find a um, job opportunity where you will get to work and be paid for your work um, between four and 16 month terms. And then that actually will count towards the co-op uh, co on your graduation. So when you receive your degree, um, it will note that you did complete a co-op um, and so that that adds to the of course the work readiness when you graduate so you already have that experience of working in a field related to computer science in this case um, but also we've seen quite a few students that will be finished their co-op um, maybe do one more year of school work part-time with that same co-op as a part-time employee and then potentially have full-time jobs right out of there as well so at this point, maybe I'll pass it back to um, the presentation and then I'll chat more about Thunder Bay area. And so we will be getting to Aurelia shortly, don't worry, we'll cover that. Um, and Katie will be our in-house expert on Aurelia. So this is Boulevard Lake. Um, this is actually a man-made lake in Thunder Bay. It is only about a 
15 to 20 minute bus ride from campus. Uh, in the summer, students can go swimming at this lake. There's a trail around the entire lake uh, and it's a beautiful walk. My house used to actually be right over here um, and it was only a couple minute walk to the lake. I've since moved now, um, but at the time when I lived by it, it was a great resource. So I'd either go walking around the lake or I'd maybe go on my bike. Um, I've seen people always skateboarding, rollerblading, all sorts of different physical activities uh, and just getting out to nature. So on the left there, you'll see the beach where students can go swimming in the summer. Um, <clears throat> and there's also a playground, there's mini putt there. Um, there's lots of fun things to do at Boulevard Lake. Um, and it is just a beautiful natural place to visit in Thunder Bay. So this is uh, an iconic view for Thunder Bay. This is the Sleeping Giant. Uh, you may have heard maybe one of our recruiters talk about it, one of our in-country representatives talk about it, or you may not have heard about it at all. Um, but this really does represent Thunder Bay um, from an image standpoint and from maybe a geographical location. So basically anywhere you are in the city that you have a view of the lake, you get a view of our sleeping giant as well. Um, so the sleeping giant uh, history has it that uh, when there is plenty of uh, silver mining back in the day, this is on a peninsula about 45 to 50 minutes away by driving from Lakehead's Thunder Bay campus. Um, rumor has it that the sleeping giant after the mine had closed laid to rest um, and then he was solidified into this mountain range. Um, I think there, there's a bit more of that story for sure. I don't know all of it, um, but it is a great view. Um, and there's lots of hiking trails, lots of nature out here. So it is a provincial park actually. And like I said, it's only about a 45 to 50 minute drive from Lakehead Thunder Bay campus. So we'll see plenty of our students uh, going out here um, and just exploring whether it be in the winter and they're gonna go snowshoeing or cross country skiing or it's in the summer or even spring and fall and they're just going on a hike. There's also a great lookout over here where you get to actually look back at Thunder Bay um, and get a really good bird's eye view of everything that's going on in our bay here. So here's a dedicated session now to questions. So I will flip back over to the questions. Um, and then Katie and Patrick, if you see any that you would like to hop in and answer, uh, of course you just have to click the answer live and then hop on here. So I do see quite a few questions about um, fees and tuition fees related to that. So with each program, uh, fees do vary. So whether you're doing an undergrad or a grad, whether you're in business, whether you're in computer science, whether you're in engineering, um, all of our programs are structured differently and have different fees based on uh, kind of the services that those faculties provide. So for example, um, in the faculty of business, uh, on top of, of course, just our regular education, we also have the Ingenuity, which is a maker space. And so tuition for that and access to that is for all students, um, but your fees reflect sort of uh, the added bonuses and features and services that are provided for that program. Uh, so I do encourage all of our students who are asking about the fees. I can't answer each of them individually, but if you do visit lakeheadu.ca forward slash international, we do have a tuition fees calculator, and simply all you have to do is enter in a few details. For example, you're an international student, you're studying this program, you're starting at this time, and you're gonna be full-time. It will calculate automatically, this is exactly how much it's going to cost. So I'm just reading some more uh, questions. I can jump in for a second while you're reading through. Sure, yeah. So one of the questions we got is, which would be better on-campus stay or off-campus stay for international students? Um, whether you're coming to Thunder Bay or Aurelia, we always recommend that you stay on campus, and that's for lots of different reasons. Um, so both in Aurelia and Thunder Bay, our campuses are run by the university, so they're Lakehead buildings, they're Lakehead staff that run those services for you. Um, you have staff that manage the building, and you also have staff that run residence life programming. Um, you also have student leaders who are paid staff members, but also full-time students. They live in the residence building. So all of these people serve the purpose of supporting you um, right from the time that you move in, throughout your studies, um, making sure that your, um, the home that you've, you've chosen is comfortable for you, um, that you're engaged and you have all your questions answered. 
Um, so really it is the safest way um, and probably the, the best way for you to be most successful, specifically within your first year. Um, we do often see that after first year, when students have made different social connections and met new friends, sometimes they do wish to move off campus. Um, but that's once they have a really strong social network and they, they've gotten to know the community a lot more. Um, when you live in residence, uh, if you're in dorm style, you will be buying a meal plan as well. Um, so even though you might be looking at the costs of residence versus living and renting a house in the community, um, just be careful of the cost you're actually looking at uh, because your residence fee, particularly in Aurelia, will also include a meal plan fee. Um, so also do some research about um, how much it would cost for you to buy your groceries and make your meals and such if you're living off campus. So. Um, so to summarize, we would definitely recommend that you choose on-campus housing specifically for your first year. Yeah, and someone, to, to just add to that, someone uh, asked a question, do we help with finding students off-campus housing? Um, the university can point you in the direction and teach you how to look for off-campus housing, but we don't make any recommendations for off-campus housing. We really encourage students to live on residence uh, for all of the reasons Katie mentioned. Um, and there we can, but our international student services team can uh, tell you where to at least find local listings um, in in Thunder Bay or Aurelia. Alrighty, so I have another question. I wish to buy a laptop from Thunder Bay itself. Would I get any student kit uh, from where I buy the same, or any discounts that I could get for purchasing that laptop? Um, so we actually. Once you get to Thunder Bay, uh, there's several different outlets that are going to be accessible to you to buy that laptop. Um, there are a few outlets that do provide, uh, as you might say, student discounts, um, but I definitely encourage you as you get to Thunder Bay, um, because it's back to school, it's typically when uh, retailers and big operators will put on some specialty pricing uh, to encourage students and entice students to buy their, for this case, a laptop at their store. Um, shop around, look for the best pricing um, before you make the final call on spending um, a, a quite, a, quite a bit of money on buying a laptop, of course. <clears throat> yeah, so a quick question about bus passes. Um, do students get a special bus pass? Currently in Thunder Bay, um, all of our students get a bus pass as a part of their tuition fees. The bus pass um, at the beginning of the school year, you get essentially a sticker put on your bus pass, and it is good for unlimited rides um, on the City of Thunder Bay public transit system uh, for the calendar year. So you do get a bus pass, and it's included in your tuition uh, fees here at, in Thunder Bay. Katie, do you want to chat, chat about the situation in Aurelia? Yeah, for sure. So very similar in Aurelia. Um, when you arrive, you do get a sticker. It goes on your student ID card um, and it says the year that it is valid. It is also valid for one year starting in September until August 31st the following year. Um, so you will be arriving at the beginning of September and you will see lots of messaging and announcements on campus about um, where to go to get that sticker. So like Patrick said, it is unlimited rides on the City of Aurelia transportation system. All you do is literally show that pass when you get on the bus um, and that'll take you everywhere you need to go within the city. Awesome. And then I have a, another, just another quick question about if, uh, if you applied for co-op or did not apply for co-op before you applied and want to uh, opt into co-op now, the great news for you is that um, you can just reach out to our admissions team or your faculty advisor when you arrive on campus and let them know you're interested in co-op and they'll, um, they'll let you know the criteria for that. Um, uh, like to get to get into a co-op when the time comes since you're not entering co-op right away in year one it's not the most urgent thing you need to do so I do have a student uh, who let us know that they have they have received an offer um, and that the confirmation deadline is April 27th um, but they're worried given the current global pandemic uh, that they wanted an extension on that timeline uh, and that confirmation date so what we're still encouraging students to do is still confirm by the date stated in their offer. So um, the dates will vary. So you need to check your offer specifically to see what your confirmation deadline is for. 
Um, of course, if any of the situation changes, uh, we have committed that students who, for example, if you were to confirm for fall 2020 and anything were to happen, um, and we, were, we weren't able to facilitate you joining us in fall 2020, uh, that confirmation deposit will still be good and you can actually move to the next uh, entry date, which would be winter 2020. Um, and we will still honor that confirmation deposit. So I do encourage you to still submit by your deadline stated in your offer. Um, if you have any questions though, please email us at welcome at lakeheadu.ca. And of course, we'll be happy to answer those questions specifically. So just a couple of questions about admissions processing times in terms of how long it takes to get a decision and offer letter back on your application for both undergraduate and graduate. So for undergraduate, uh, for most applications, we can make a decision within 10 to 15 business days, but that assumes that you have submitted a complete application. So that is all of your grades and required documents um, listed on your My Info when you apply. For graduate studies, the process can vary a little bit because it goes faculty by faculty. So the best thing to do for graduate studies is ensure you've submitted a complete, complete application, all of your documents requested, and then to check your, your MyInfo account because all decisions for graduate studies will be posted to Lakehead U as uh, MyInfo, which you should have your login credentials to when you apply um, first. That's the first place they go. Um, Many faculties don't review the graduate applications until after the deadlines have passed. And so that was not too long ago. So decisions should start to come out soon. Um, stay plugged into my info uh, for the most up-to-date information. So there was a question about graduate scholarships. So I know um, myself and Patrick have talked about scholarships briefly. Um, for graduate scholarships, there are opportunities to be in something called a graduate assistantship which is um, in a very a very simple way it is uh, working with your professor to help them as a, a graduate assistant and in their teaching so whether it's you're helping them prepare slide decks for their classes whether you're helping them with research opportunities whether you're helping them um, review grades and enter grades online for them there's a lot of different things that you can do with a graduate assistantship um, those are offered on a limited, very limited basis to graduate students. Um, and those are done, I believe, Patrick, if you, you can correct me, um, when students arrive on campus, they uh, can then kind of figure out the graduate assistantship. Yeah, so graduate funding is really a case by case scenario. So the graduate studies website outlines um, how to, how to, um, potentially secure graduate funding and I'd really recommend working with your faculty advisor and following the steps outlined by the Faculty of Graduate Studies uh, <clears throat> if you're interested in, in, in graduate funding. Awesome, so I know that we still have a few questions here open, um, but just be mindful of the time. I do want to hop back to the slides um, and I'll pass it off to maybe Patrick. Do you want to chat about Fort William Gardens or I can? No, uh, for sure. So Fort William Gardens is uh, the uh, local arena here in Thunder Bay. It seats, I think, uh, just over 3,000 people at full capacity. It has been home to both a number of concerts, um, but it is also home to the Lakehead University uh, varsity hockey team, the men's hockey team. So uh, a big part of Canadian culture, obviously, is ice hockey. Um, and Lakehead has a very competitive ice hockey team that competes against other Canadian universities uh, throughout the year. So it's a great place on a weekend. Um, there's a special deal for student tickets if you're interested in watching a game. Um, and it's a really cool environment uh, while you're in Thunder Bay. Awesome. So here's another good photo of um, the surrounding area of Thunder Bay. This is Thunder Bay's Mount McKay here. Um, right here on the left, if you see where my mouse is, um, there's actually a great lookout of the city of Thunder Bay. You can also hike to the top of this mountain. Um, I've done it quite a few times now. It is a steep hike, but it's a short one, so it's, it's not too bad. Um, and then up here in the corner, you start to see Loch Lomond Ski Hill, uh, which I'll chat about in the next slide. So Loch Lomond Ski Hill is one of the two local ski hills we have here in Thunder Bay. Um, this one's about a 15 minute drive from the Lake at Thunder Bay campus. Um, so this is where students get to go skiing, snowboarding. You can also do snowshoeing. 
Um, and one of the really fun things is tubing. So in, uh, throughout the winter, they are uh, always making more snow to make sure that uh, there's fresh powder for us as skiers and as av avid winter goers. Um, so this is actually very close to my house now. Um, like I had said, I had moved away from Boulevard Lake. Now I'm over here by Loch Lomond. Um, and lots of our international students, uh, when I'm out skiing, I'll see them, I'll connect with them. And it's really great to see them enjoying some of the natural winter environments and getting to learn a little bit about uh, kind of Canada's go-to <clears throat> go uh, sports or activities to keep busy in the winter. So winter activities, um, you'll see here, this is like I was talking about, uh, Lake Tamblin. It does freeze over in the winter and our students like to go skating on here. In this case, they're playing a bit of scrimmage hockey. Um, like Patrick had said, hockey is a very, very popular sport in Canada and people are always excited to learn about it, try it for the first time. Um, and being that we have students from all over Canada and all over the world, um, there's plenty of opportunity to interact and learn from somebody who already knows those skills. So whether you're an international student who's never stepped foot on ice or never had skates on before, uh, you'll certainly meet friends and make friends who uh, maybe grew up and at the age of one, their parents had them in skates and playing some hockey. So uh, you'll get a little bit of practice with that. So I know I have another question period dedicated here. Um, we haven't received too many extra after the last one, so I'll still keep going um, and I'll power through from the bay. Oh, Jordan, sorry. I just wanted to jump in. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple students had mentioned uh, some very specific questions around uh, COVID-19 and coronavirus. Um, I just wanted to direct all of our students to um, our, our webpage, uh, lakeheadu.ca slash about slash coronavirus, and I've sent them that link uh, in the one-on-one -on -one chat. Just uh, that's the place where Lakehead University is posting the most up-to-date information about all of our coronavirus COVID-19 uh, related uh, policies, procedures, directives, all of that. So um, I'd recommend that if that's something you're interested in knowing more about or need to know more about, start there um, because it has the best and most accurate information. Sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt you, Jordan. No worries. Thanks for making that point, Patrick. And then I also will add that um, that's a really great resource because our senior management team has been working very, very dedicatedly to answer some of the frequently asked questions or FAQs. Um, and so I know that that page has quite a large FAQ section already built out to many of the questions that we've been receiving about uh, delaying confirmation offers, admissions processes, um, new procedures that we're doing, all that sort of stuff is on that website. So I do encourage, like Patrick said, to go and visit that. It's a great resource that we've built. Um, so here we have the Thunder Bay campus. Um, this is actually, again, like I said, Lake Tamblin. And then uh, right there we have the University Center, which is where our um, lots of our lecture halls are located, our Agora, um, lots of different services and administrative offices, as well as the main cafeteria and residence cafeteria, all looking right there. Um, and they have a great view of Lake Tamblin as well. <clears throat> So in relation to uh, some of the questions we were receiving about how close Lakehead University is to downtown. Um, so circled there in yellow is Lakehead University's Thunder Bay campus. Um, up in the left there uh, is the north core of Port Arthur. And then on the right is the south core of Fort William. So I had, as I had mentioned, we used to have the two cities that amalgamated into one Thunder Bay. Um, so those are kind of the, the locations of the two cities. Um, now we've spread over the entire landmass and we're all one big uh, city. <clears throat> so if you're looking at the airport, here is Lakehead University in relation to the airport. So it's about an 11 minute drive to the airport. Very simple, like Patrick had talked about and Katie had talked about, uh, for all of our new international students. Um, when they arrive, as long as they fill out a free airport pickup form, um, we will arrange that transportation piece from the airport to either your off-campus housing or your on-campus housing. So here's a little photo of the Thunder Bay campus. Um, on the left there, you see the main campus with most of our academic buildings. Um, that is where the International Student Center is. On the right here, we have residence, and that's just 
uh, a few of the residents. And then on the left at the bottom here, we have athletics. Um, we're also building a uh, brand new expansion to our athletics department. So that is hoping to be complete for fall 2020. Um, but you can learn more about that on our website, of course. <clears throat> and so this is um, the actual 180 view of that. So main campus there, right in the middle, most of our academic buildings, athletics at the top right residence. Um, the reason why I've included these photos in the slideshow is just to show you a bit about how close everything is located on campus. You won't be, uh, if you're living on campus especially, uh, it's about a five minute walk to most of your classes. You won't be uh, walking for hours on end across campus, even though um, lots of people see Canada as a very large country. Um, on a scale wise, Lake Ed's campus isn't uh, too large to the point where you'll be walking for hours, as I had mentioned. Um, so at the very top there is Lake Ed University. You can kind of recognize the academic buildings, maybe probably just more so that I recognize them because I work there every day. Um, but we do have grocery stores quite close to campus. So in some cases, they're, they're two kilometers away. Um, we have shopping only 2.5 kilometers away. The shopping mall is three and a half kilometers away. There's another huge shopping center four kilometers away. So all located very close to campus. Um, and in this case, with that free bus pass that Patrick and Katie were talking about, um, students can get here very quick and easily um, simply by using their bus pass. So now I will go back to questions uh, briefly, and then um, I'll pass it over to Katie. I know that her section is going to be coming up. So we do have one question. A student would like to know whether uh, they can submit their grades via social media to see if they're eligible for the university. Um, so we do, we're not involved in any pre-assessment um, via social media. Our graduate studies team will not do a pre-assessment, unfortunately. Um, and in certain cases, our undergraduate admissions team may be able to do a pre-assessment, um, but all of those need to be submitted directly to those departments. Um, so I encourage you to look at our website, lakehandu.ca forward slash international. Um, and then once you've clicked the future student tab, uh, there is a steps to enrolling uh, page and that will outline exactly all the way step one to I believe it's step 17 right now on the different things that you need to do to make sure that you're um, fully aware of becoming a student at Lakehead. A couple of quick questions. Um, are there any welcome parties for international graduate students? And so uh, uh, both for interna all international students, undergraduate and graduate, we do have our international orientation, as well as international students, uh, whether they're undergraduate or graduate, are invited to participate in um, orientation events available for all students. So there's a specific orientation for international students, as well as the availability to participate in any orientation. And then another question is, do all Canadians say A at the end of a sentence? Um, and the answer to that is maybe. Um, many Canadians do say A, that stereotype is, is true. Um, maybe not at the end of every sentence. I think many of us say it subconsciously. And hopefully uh, when you come to Canada, you can make the judgment to yourself. And maybe you'll start using the word A. Yes, I've actually, I've heard quite a few of um, my new friends that are international. Um, they've started using that word on a regular basis and it's just kind of a habit that you pick up. Um, I don't even notice when I say it and it's funny watching their faces like when I first say it when I meet them at orientation and maybe I've met them virtually already in a method like this and then I meet them and I say a at the end of a sentence or I work it into the sentence somehow their kind of reaction is like oh my gosh like you did it you said a I've heard it now I've heard the truly Canadian thing um, it's funny I, I love it. <laughs> I was going to jump in to answer a couple other questions. I put some information in the chat box there. The one question was, any medical care center located in the vicinity of the university? So in the chat box, I put the link to um, Student Health and Wellness Services. There are services on campus in both Thunder Bay and Aurelia, um, but both Thunder Bay and Aurelia also have large general hospitals available to our students. Um, so you might, you might already be aware, but all full-time degree-seeking international students are required to have health insurance called the University Health Insurance Plan, um, or UHIP for short. Um, this is very similar to OHIP, the Ontario Health Insurance Plan, um, that I would have as a permanent resident in Ontario. Um, if, 
If you are an English Language Center student, you are going to have gardening health insurance. Um, this provides you with very similar access um, until the time that you would be starting your degree and you would flip over to the university health insurance plan. Um, we talk about this information about health insurance in great depth throughout orientation. Um, so just know that it, the information is coming your way, but you can find more info online in the meantime. Um, we also go over how to access healthcare, um, whether you're at Thunder Bay or the Aurelia campus. Um, so great questions. Check out the website that I listed in the chat. Um, and then the other question uh, was about applying for a permanent residency. Um, so definitely a common question that we get. In the chat box, I indicated that we do have a licensed immigration advisor on staff within the international department. Uh, Jennifer is always doing workshops for international students. Um, she can do things like helping you renew your documents for your study permits and your visas, um, preparing for co-op and working in Canada. Um, but when it comes to that, at that option of seeking permanent residency after graduation. We have some great partnerships with uh, community service providers like Costi and the YMCA Immigrant Services. Um, and these settlement counselors are brought on campus to provide free counseling for you um, to talk more in depth about these types of questions. Um, we also have Immigration Refugee Citizenship Canada, federal government representatives that do come on campus about once a semester um, to provide detailed workshops about um, pathway, different pathways to permanent residency. Um, so I listed in the chat the link to our, um, our website where there's more information on immigration supports and services. Yeah, and just a quick follow up about international health insurance. Um, they ask, is the health insurance plan included in tuition fees? Um, when you go on the uh, student tuition calculator, it does in uh, include that health, uh, that value as part of the tuition and fees estimate. Um, it's just over 600 uh, Canadian dollars uh, uh, per year. Um, it changes year to year and so uh, the most inf accurate information can be found on the tuition calculator online, but it is included in that estimate, yes. Alrighty, so I will move on to the Aurelia section. I know that uh, Katie is actually going to be hosting a resume workshop with her students in Aurelia, helping them uh, prepare to get jobs on campus, uh, in the community, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so I want to make sure that she has time to chat about uh, Aurelia before she heads out. So I'll pass it over to her now. Um, and then at any point, Katie, since I do have control of the screen, if you want me to click over to the next slide, uh, just let me know, okay? Okay, awesome. Thank you. And thanks for seeing that. Um, <laughs> So to give you some brief information about Aurelia, the city of Aurelia is located uh, near the greater Toronto area or the GTA. We're about 90 minute drive from Toronto um, and we're in the heart of Ontario's Lake Country. Um, similar to Thunder Bay, our um, history of Aurelia also is um, closely linked to our access to water. So we sit on the shores of Lake Kuchiching and Lake Simcoe. Um, our population is, is fairly small, we're about 30,000 people. Um, but the great thing about Aurelia is that you have easy access to lots of surrounding larger cities. Um, within about a 90 minute radius, you can get to many different surrounding cities. So next slide, please. Perfect. So this is a shot of our downtown area. Um, the main street of Aurelia is where you're going to find lots of really quaint um, locally owned shops. So lots of locally owned restaurants, local goods, uh, Canadian products even, um, sweets and treats. Um, so it's a great place to check out. Our downtown vendors love seeing Lakehead students coming into their stores and many of them do uh, tend to offer different discounts um, if you simply just show your Lakehead ID card. Awesome. So I know you chatted about the history of Aurelia, so um, maybe you could chat a little bit about these buildings because they're so beautiful. Um, and I know then we can move on after that. Sorry, I couldn't hear you, Jordan. It cut out. Oh, sorry. Um, that's okay. Um, I said, I, I know that you've chatted ab about the history of Aurelia, but maybe uh, the history of this building just oh, because yeah, sure. it's so cool. Um, and then we can move on to the next section too. Sure. So this is the Aurelia Opera House. Um, so uh, Aurelia is actually has a strong connection to the arts community, uh, visual arts, musical arts, um, everything really. And um, there have been many artists that have called Aurelia home in the past. And this is just one building that really celebrates that, that longstanding history. Um, so the Opera House is where you'll, you'll see lots of different performances. Um, it is also the location of the downtown um, bus station. Uh, so this is where you would 
uh, get off the bus and transfer if you're going to different areas of the city. Um, so it is right downtown Aurelia. You definitely cannot miss it. So here we have the Aurelia waterfront. Um, and I know this is quite close to downtown. Uh, there, you see the main street in the middle, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and that connects to all of the shops and restaurants that Katie was talking about. Um, and then a short walk down to the waterfront where students get to go and exercise and walk through trails and whatnot. And also just get a beautiful view of the lake. So yeah, just to add, um, that the past picture and this current picture again at the waterfront there mm -hmm. um tons of walking trails that you can bike a rollerblade um or just go for a stroll um we are actually a very big cottage country area within the warmer months so we see a great influx of population people coming from the greater toronto toronto area to enjoy um, a quieter atmosphere, more relaxing, and to spend lots more time outdoors. So um, as part of that, we have tons of festivals and events that occur almost every weekend in the summer. Uh, just to the left of that, that picture there, you'll see a um, kind of an entertainment center, which is one of the locations that we would have the Sunday night bands and concerts going on, um, and it would be the hub of activity for any special festivals or occasions that are being celebrated downtown. Okay, so here you can see Lakehead University at the bottom of your screen there. Um, Lakehead is located in the newer end, the west side of the city, um, where there's been a lot of development, particularly over the last few years. Um, so even in this picture, it's probably a few years old now. Um, and right around Lakehead University, we've actually had great development of um, lock, lots of local businesses, restaurants, um, and some really great employers for, for um, Lakehead students particularly. Um, so definitely lots within walking distance. Um, there's also lots of grocery stores, big box stores, technology stores. Um, you can walk there in the nice weather, but there's also a bus route that takes you there in about five minutes. Um, if you should find yourself in the dead of winter um, in one of our many snow belts in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so we've also circled uh, close to the top of the screen, the downtown area. Um, so this is where the opera house that you saw, that big, beautiful old building. Um, and again, all the bus routes, there are two bus routes that come to campus um, and both will take you directly downtown so you can transfer buses and head off in a different direction if you should need it. Um, but quite honestly, everything you need, basic essentials, are really located within that west end of the, the town where Lakehead is located. Um, so unless you get more adventurous and you want to explore your community in, in greater depth, um, we encourage you to do so, but really it's not necessary. And then the road on the right there, that actually is the main road that uh, heads out of Aurelia um, and goes downtown or down towards Toronto, I should say. Uh, so it is a 90 minute drive um, and that's basically right to Toronto. Um, there is a bit of flexibility in there for the airport, Toronto Pearson. Uh, it depends if you catch the traffic or not. So we're, we're quite lucky. Um, this is something that I hear all the time from students is that when they're in our cities, uh, there's, there's really not much traffic at all. There's not uh, too much rush hour. They're not sitting in traffic for hours, um, all that sort of stuff. Whereas some of the major cities that they're coming from, they could be in these uh, rush hour deadlock traffic situations for hours on end. And we're, we're very lucky not to have any of that in Thunder Bay or Aurelia. Very true. All right, so the Aurelia campus is much smaller than the Thunder Bay campus. We only have three buildings. Um, so on the right there, the academic building is where all of your classes would be located. Um, all of your labs would be there, faculty offices, um, and that's also where my office is located. The L-shaped building on the left is our residence. Um, so it is seven floors. There's about 170 to 200 students that live in our residence. Um, but all students are welcome. The main floor of residence has various offices that students need to access, um, and it is open to all students, regardless of whether you're living there or you're just visiting. Um, and close to the top of the screen is the cafeteria and bookstore. So it's one building, shared space. Um, 
And in the cafeteria, um, a lot of the meals are actually made on the spot. Um, our staff work very closely with students to accommodate for certain diets or food intolerances, um, and they're very amenable to, um, to adjust their recipes and, and make things on the go to make sure that you're getting what you need. Um, in the bookstore is where you would you can find any kind of school supplies and equipment, um, obviously where you buy your textbooks. You can buy those in advance, uh, order them online so you can pick up in the bookstore and it's one less thing for you to do when you get here. Very true, yeah. So I mentioned that within a 90 minute radius, you can get to lots of different surrounding cities. Um, one of the big perks to the location in which uh, we live is that there are a few different ski hills. So Jordan mentioned ski opportunities in Thunder Bay. Um, it's the same thing in Aurelia. And one of those places is called Blue Mountain Resort. So whether you're a first time skier or a snowboarder, whether you wanna try tubing maybe, um, snowshoeing, or just um, get a sense of what it's like to um, live the Canadian lifestyle, Blue Mountain is actually a really great place for you to check out. Um, and it's under, under a 90 minute drive. Um, so a great place for you to go if you're looking for a weekend adventure. And Katie, correct me if I'm wrong though, uh, some of your excursions that you're actually hosting, you're sending students out on, um, so you're facilitating all the planning, all of the travel all that uh, is to Blue Mountain and doing these excursions to other cities. Is that correct? Yeah, for sure. So we had a couple trips um, this past winter semester. We had one trip to Muskoka, um, which is no very much known as cottage country in um, the southern Ontario area. Um, so we went to the Muskoka, Muskoka Fire and Ice Festival in January. And then in February, there was a trip to the Blue Mountain Resort, just a day trip. So students got on the bus in the morning. They had free time to do whatever they like while they were there. Um, and then they hop on the bus and they were home by 10 p.m. at night by, for both of those trips. Um, when we do trips like that, students do have the option to stay overnight if they want to make their own plans. Um, you're all adults and we trust you to do your own thing. Um, but we offer that transportation to return home uh, to keep it more cost effective for students who want to return with us. Awesome. And so here's a uh, plan uh, for all of the different trails and runs that you can do at Blue Mountain. Um, and like Katie had mentioned, you can try skiing, you can try snowboarding, or like the girl in the bottom right, you can try tubing, uh, which I would highly recommend. It's really, really fun. Um, I myself have not been to Blue Mountain, but we have a very similar tubing uh, experience here in Thunder Bay at either Mount Baldy or Loch Lomond, one of our two ski, ski areas. Um, if you want to check out uh, Blue Mountain's Instagram and just get an idea of like what winter activities that you can be involved in. I also know that they do a bit in the summer too. Um, I can't speak to exactly what they do, uh, but it's al always a great time when you get to experience kind of like the local community and the activities of a truly Canadian experience. So we will flip back to questions. I know that um, Katie, Patrick, and then we also have our colleague Paula behind the scenes answering questions. Um, we've been doing that throughout the webinar. Um, so there's one really great question. Uh, what is the rankings of Lakehead University in Canada? So some of our most proud rankings as a university as a whole, um, we are Canada's top 10 uh, university for the primarily undergraduate field. Um, we're also can the number one undergraduate research university in Canada. We have over 80 nations represented in our student body. Um, we are the top Canadian university under 10,000 students. As well, we are recognized uh, in the top of the universities around the world by Times Higher Education. So we are in the top uh, half of that recognition which I know several students use some of those rankings to determine um, kind of the value of the university. So we're always proud to share some of these rankings that we have. I believe you're on mute, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna jump in and answer a bunch of questions because I've been sitting in the chat looking at them. Awesome, um, just thank a you. A quick, a quick one about mobile cell phones from from abroad or getting one in Canada. Um, there are a variety of cell phone providers in Canada. I 
think it's generally advisable that you get a Canadian cell phone plan, right? A SIM from a Canadian cell phone provider because, or else you'll end up paying uh, pretty extensive data roaming charges. Um, you can bring unlocked cell phones to Canada and put a SIM in them. Um, and also there are ways to get a, a cell phone and a plan on a contract here in Canada. During orientation, our student services team will help you uh, you know, connect you with some of the local providers and point you in the right direction. Um, another quick question is how can I apply for an a job as an international student? We talked about this a little bit earlier, but our international student services team has a whole group of people who help students uh, prepare their resume, learn how to do interviews, and, um, and find jobs uh, on or off campus. And uh, actually, I think Katie's going to be doing one of those for some students in Aurelia shortly. So, <laughs> um, Are there any water sports in Thunder Bay? Yes, of course. Uh, Thunder Bay is on the biggest freshwater lake in the world, Lake Superior. Um, sailing, water skiing, uh, fishing, all available, uh, plus a number of other ones in Thunder Bay. Um, yeah. Um, and then, uh, last question I'm just going to rip through here um, about uh, career fairs for graduate students or moving to Toronto. So um, we bring in, our, our student services team brings in a variety of employers for career fairs throughout the school year, um, some targeted at really specific programs, other for all graduating students. And um, there, the employers come from both locally in Thunder Bay or Aurelia, as well as regionally and nationally. So really Lakehead grads go all over the country, some stay, some go, um, and we do our best to help our students uh, find the job that makes the most sense for them. Mm -hmm. So I have a question here. Uh, do you rec recommend that we buy our laptop from Thunder Bay or bring their laptop that maybe they purchased back home? Uh, and they said with respects to charging and operations. So it definitely depends on what laptop you've purchased back home. Um, you can of course buy power converters. So um, your outlets and the socket, the electrical sockets at your home maybe look a little different than a North American one or a Canadian one. Um, so you will have to buy a converter if you don't already have one that matches ours. Um, but based on like operations of your laptop, of course, uh, you know best of how powerful your own laptop is and uh, how it will suit your needs for your program, for example. Um, if at any point your laptop isn't cutting it, of course, uh, there's resources to buy your laptop like Katie had mentioned and Patrick had mentioned. Uh, there's plenty of stores in the surrounding area to buy, but also um, on Thunder Bay campus, we do have Campus Tech, which is a store that you can buy uh, electronics and laptops right at the heart of campus. So you don't even have to leave campus to buy those electronics. Yeah, so uh, um, just a quick note on computers. Um, someone asked, should they, what, which operating system, Mac or Windows, um, and kind of the specs of the computer um, for a master's in computer science. I would really recommend ca contacting the faculty and faculty advisor to see what the faculties recommend for your specific program, especially in a program like computer science. And then the tail end of that question was extending dates due to the pandemic. Um, I will say again, uh, right now, you know, it's a very, it's a developing situation with the coronavirus and COVID-19. Uh, Lakehead University has a great resource, uh, lakeheaduniversity.ca um, slash about slash coronavirus, and all of our latest information about applicants, classes, delivery methods, decisions being made are being put there and um, keep an eye on your email. So I would recommend checking out that link and keeping updated on your email for the most up-to-date information. I'll chime in to answer the question about um, renting houses. So again, we just, we always um, recommend that you live on campus in Lakehead's um, on-campus housing. Um, but if you should choose to live off campus, um, please do some research on um, best practices of renting houses in Ontario. Um, we would recommend that you always see the house first um, before committing to any kind of monetary money commitment or signing any kind of lease. Um, it's always great to go meet the person, to go see the physical space that you're going to live in. Um, so uh, just be cautious. Um, 
try to maybe have a face-to-face -face conversation with the person if you'd like to meet them while you're still at home, um, but make an appointment to see the space first um, before committing to any kind of um, contract or anything. Um, if you go to um, our international student centers, we have various off-campus housing workshops uh, to give you the tools and um, resources available to you from a legal perspective about your responsibilities as a tenant renting in Ontario and the responsibilities of the landlord, the person who is renting to you. Um, so the government of Ontario is the uh, kind of governing body for renting purposes in Ontario. Um, so I would encourage you to do as much research as possible and reach out to your international student services teams um, if you're needing further help with that. Yeah, and also to speak a little bit about off-campus housing, uh, like Katie had said, uh, we always encourage students to actually go to the potential rental in person, meet the, uh, the homeowner, and then make your decision at that point. Um, so that ties into the fact why we strongly recommend always uh, your first year that you're studying with us at Lakehead is staying, we encourage studying on campus and staying and living on campus. Uh, it's really important because we've seen that students that have been on campus, studying on campus, living on campus, all that sort of stuff, uh, we've seen it tie directly into uh, their success, uh, most importantly academics, because they have the support and the resources that are already built in and available to students but they're easily accessible on campus and they're only a, maybe a minute or two walk in some cases. Um, and that also gives you the opportunity. So now that you've been on campus, like Katie, I know had talked about, you've built that friend group that now you know that you can live with and that you can put up with in the living situation. Um, and you might be actually looking for that off campus housing with your friends after you've already established those friendships. So one student asks, is this meeting going to be available to watch again or download later? Yes, it will be. Uh, so it will be published on our YouTube channel um, and all of our students will receive the link to that following the video. Um, it does, does take us some time to process it and upload it and whatnot. Uh, so be mindful of that, but it will be accessible after the fact for sure. Another question, are bicycles available to rent in order to commute from one place to another? Uh, so on campus, uh, we do not provide any bicycle rentals, um, but that's not to say that in some of our uh, downtown cores, for example, there are local businesses that do rent bicycles or they rent recreational equipment in general, um, but we don't facilitate that on our end at, on campus. But uh, I know that when you're living on campus, there is uh, storage units for your bicycles. So if you choose to in the summer buy a brand new bicycle or buy a used bicycle even, um, you can store that right on campus with you. So just a quick question about um, participation in clubs or activities that the university has to offer without additional fees. So uh, as a part of your student fees, um, a variety, one of the fees is, is for clubs and events. However, um, it's kind of a mix. So a lot of clubs and fees uh, or clubs are activities are free of charge. Um, some events and activities charge a very small fee, um, kind of to just keep the cost low for everybody. Um, but there are a number of things you can participate for free, um, including our athletic facilities. So as a member of either, either campus, as a member of the university, you get a, an athletic facility pass included with your tuition and there's no additional cost for that. So it kind of depends. Um, and then someone asked, is Thunder Bay a small town? So by definition, Thunder Bay is a medium-sized Canadian city. What that means is that just over 100,000 people, um, and that's medium-sized in Canada. For some of our students coming from all over the world, Thunder Bay is going to feel very different because some of our students come from very big cities, uh, centers. Other students come from smaller cities and are going to feel very comfortable in Thunder Bay. Mm -hmm. Thunder Bay is a city that has everything a student needs, I think, which is important. It's got a great bus system, as well as all of the amenities, shopping malls, movie theaters, coffee shops, restaurants, live music, um, a great local arts and culture scene, um, athletic facilities. So you're not going to miss anything in Thunder Bay. And I've heard time and time again from uh, our current students that maybe come from those really large city centers, as I had mentioned uh, kind of sitting in the, the rush hour traffic and deadlock traffic. Um, and now they've come to Thunder Bay and they absolutely are so impressed and they absolutely love the fact that our city is 
um, in their eyes a bit smaller when, than what they're used to. Of course, if you're coming from a city that has a few million people living in it, um, every day, every day is going to be hectic. It's going to seem rushed. There's always, uh, with big cities, it's that go, go, go pace. Whereas Thunder Bay, um, with her access to nature, even though we still have the full access to amenities uh, and everything else that Patrick had mentioned, our students um, kind of have a chance to take a deep breath and relax and take it by, uh, take it slower in a sense. Um, and I've heard that time and time again from our current students that uh, the change in pace is something that really helps them adjust. And then the last question in the Q&A, is it possible for couples to stay on campus? Um, so all of the rooms at Lakehead are single dorm rooms, which means no one shares a bedroom with anybody, uh, regardless of the situation. Um, so the answer to that in a roundabout way is no, because no one has any roommates at Lakehead. Um, everyone has their own private dorm or, or room, regardless of the, the situation. Awesome. So now I'm going to flip back to the uh, the presentation and just chat about getting involved on campus. Um, I know Katie, you might have to head out at some point. Um, so I do want to take this opportunity to thank Katie for joining us. Um, and speaking about Aurelia and sharing your insight about Aurelia, I know that I would not have been able to cover it as well as you did. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks everyone for listening in today and I'm looking forward to meeting everybody. So I am going to sign off now and get over to our resume workshop, but take care. See you guys soon on another webinar. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Bye Katie. Um, so getting involved, I wanted to chat a bit about uh, some of the opportunities that students have when they're on campus. Um, so there's plenty of clubs, student clubs, societies um, that are on campus and students can get involved with. So for example, um, if you're an engineering student, there is something called the ESS, which is Engineering Student Society. Um, it is the society that represents our Faculty of Engineering and all of our students there. Um, on a regular basis, they're hosting events for those engineering students to meet each other, to interact with each other, uh, and kind of have that communication piece where they're meeting students that maybe aren't in their typical courses, upper year students, and you're making new friends. Um, I also know that each uh, discipline within engineering. So we have five of them. Um, each of them have their own student club. So for example, our um, civil engineering club, uh, those students are typically involved in competitions. So we have something called the steel bridge competition. And that's where students in uh, mechanical or civil engineering, um, they will be involved in building a steel bridge. Um, and then it's put to the test by a uh, group of individuals and the national and then even international competitions that these students are involved in. Um, <clears throat> so Patrick, did you have anything to add about getting involved in like student clubs and just staying active on campus and whatnot? Yeah, so there's a great opportunity for all students to get involved, regardless of your interest. I kind of mentioned earlier, we do have the uh, included um, like health and recreation facilities in terms of the gym membership, but there are over 65 student clubs run by students for students. Um, and these range in a variety of activities from academic pursuits to watching movies to poetry and everything in between. And so I really encourage all of our students to take advantage of all of these um, clubs and, and get involved. Awesome, so uh, supporting you. So of course, uh, on top of the student experience and those student clubs and being involved and whatnot, um, as a university, we wanna make sure that we're supporting you properly. Um, and so on both of our campuses, we do provide quite a few support services. Um, for example, like we have talked about already, the Health and Wellness Center, uh, where students can go and have access to nurse practitioners and doctors, um, as well as we provide programming where students can learn about, um, for example, meditation and even yoga and kind of that de-stressing maybe during uh, stressful academic times, such as the exam period. Um, we also have very specialized international student services. So we do have an in-house immigration advisor who can help with your study permit. Uh, and then eventually when it comes to graduation, they can, she can help with um, your permanent residency application and kind of guide you in that. And Katie and the girl in Jennifer, her name is, uh, 
or the girl in Thunder Bay, pardon me, her name is Jennifer. Um, they are hosting the workshops for uh, study permits and immigrations on a regular basis so that students are fully updated and aware about the current situation and um, kind of guiding that process. We also have uh, international student orientations hosted by our international student services team. We have personal uh, counseling and guidance available through our international student advisors. Um, and then on our Thunder Bay campus, we have the International Student Center, where it is the kind of hub of campus, the heart of campus, where all of our international students can come together and uh, share each other's cultures and interact and also just relax and enjoy, um, whether it's at the coffee bar, whether it's at the TV, playing some video games on one of the many game systems we have. We also use that center in Thunder Bay to host all of our our, most of our cultural events. So when we do celebrations such as our culture days that are focused around different parts of the world um, and we celebrate that through food and music and just um, different cultural aspects. That's all done at our International Student Center. And there's plenty of other supports that are available for students um, and that's all listed on our website. So if you visit us at lakeadu.ca forward slash international um, and you click on future there's several different tabs that explain those supports that are available and how we can guide you in your academic journey. Um, so here's some great photos of our Thunder Bay campus. Um, on the left there is the ATAC building. I know that's where the home of our electrical engineering is, several of our computer sciences. Um, as a business student, I had plenty of my courses in here as well that were related to information systems and lecture halls in general. Um, on the right here is our law school. So that's a really beautiful building. It's quite old and has a lot of history to Thunder Bay. It used to be at one point a high school um, and it's had many roles for our community for sure. Um, the classroom environment, of course, on campus. Uh, so a really proud thing that we, we have here is on our Aurelia campus, we have a student faculty ratio of 13. For every 13 students, we have one faculty member. And on our Thunder Bay campus, we have a student faculty ratio of for every 15 students, we have one faculty member. So we always try and keep those numbers uh, small so that we ensure that students have access to faculty members and have the sports available to them. Um, so maybe I'll pass it off to Patrick, chat a little bit about athletics. I know we've covered this topic quite a bit, uh, but just staying active and whatnot on campus. Yeah, so uh, these are both in Thunder Bay. We have um, great athletic facilities. Um, we have what's called the hangar, which has an indoor soccer pitch as well as 400 meter track. Um, and attached to the hangar is the CJ Sounders Fieldhouse, which um, has a weight room, aerobic facilities, uh, sw uh, Olympic swimming pool, and full double gymnasium. Mm -hmm. And as a part of uh, your tuition, Every student gets access to these facilities and our open gym times as well as campus rec leagues you can join to participate in, um, you know, competitive recreational volleyball or badminton or football, both American and uh, regular, I guess would be the word, football, yeah. soccer. <laughs> um, and so speaking to this also on th our Thunder Bay campus, we are actually uh, in the process of a uh, major, major expansion. So we're building a new athletics facility attached to both the hangar and the field house that we currently have. Um, mm -hmm. And once that is opened, it will provide more student support services as well as um, new facilities. So it will have another double gymnasium um, and other uh, cardio rooms, yoga rooms, all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> yeah. And then just to, to touch quickly on Aurelia, um, uh, Aurelia Athletics, they get access to the local YMCA. Um, kind of fam made famous from the song, but the YMCA is a, is a full gymnasium and it also has a swimming pool, a gymnasium, uh, aerobic and anaerobic workout facilities, classes and leagues that our students can participate in. Yeah, and I actually, so I just visited Aurelia um, at the end of January and we did some photo shoots and video shoots in the YMCA with our current students to then be able to provide you with an example and to give you a preview of what it's like. Uh, exercising in those facilities and I was really impressed of some of the equipment and how advanced all of it was and just how beautiful uh, that facility was. Um, it's a great asset and the students that came out to the photo shoot and that were participating in there uh, were able to speak to and give me kind of the real life input and the perspective of 
how, how, the, how much they appreciate getting access to these facilities on a regular basis and having already built into the fees. So uh, it looks like we have one question. I'll hop over to the Q&A. Yeah, um, so it's just asking about if the library is open late during exams. The answer is yes, the library does change its hours uh, normally during exams and they do a good job on their social media of communicating those hours as we get back into a normal schedule um, and then what the hours would be, you know, during exams and then during the regular school year. Awesome. So I will now chat about staying connected. So uh, one of the main ways we use uh, social media here at Lakehead uh, is to stay connected with our students and kind of build that community. So before you even arrive on campus, uh, we do have a Facebook group called Lakehead University Incoming Class of 2020. So that is a group managed by our Facebook page, Lakehead University International. So that group has both international and domestic students joining on a regular basis. Uh, there's great conversations happening on there. Students are meeting each other before they even arrive, but they're also uh, they're asking questions of their peers and getting help from their peers. Um, we also have an Instagram, Lakehead International. We have a Twitter, Lakehead INTL. And we do have a YouTube channel, Lakehead University, so that is a shared account for the entire university. Our playlists on there are both Lakehead International and Lakehead International Live. So the Inter Lakehead International Live playlist is all pre-recorded versions of our webinars uh, that we've hosted uh, over the past few months. Um, and as we do more of these daily lives, we'll be uh, uploading those to that platform as well. Um, so as I wrap up for the webinar today, um, I'll double check if we don't have any more questions. Um, I will mention, so we do have daily live events going on. Uh, to stay connected and to answer your inquiries. We had a really great discussion today. We had, let me double check the number, it was uh, nearly 70 questions asked today and answered. Um, and that doesn't include just, that's only in the Q&A function. We also had plenty in the chat. So uh, given the chat questions, we are over 70 for sure. Um, and thank you so much for helping us and guiding this conversation and uh, getting the answers that I know are pressing for you. Uh, but don't forget to join us live each day. Um, we will be sending out a weekly schedule. Uh, so whether you found us on social media or whether you received an email from us, uh, you will receive a weekly schedule. You can join us tomorrow on our Instagram at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time um, on Instagram, which is Lakehead International. I will be doing a Instagram live with one of our current students, Catherine, who is from Computer Science from India. Um, and she is graduating in just a few months here. Um, so she'll be chatting and joining you live about her student experience, her program in computer science, um, all of that sort of stuff. So I really encourage you to join us live. Um, if you're not able to join us live at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be uploading that version of uh, the Instagram Live as pre-recorded onto our IGTV. So stay tuned. Um, thank you again for joining us and thank you, Patrick, for taking the time to help me out with this one. No problem. I'll chat with all of you soon, I hope. Alrighty. Thanks again. Thanks.